So welcome everybody to the session on Team Transformation Canvas. Team building starts with you. We have our speaker, Richard Kaspariski. Welcome, Richard. Um, so without any further delays, over to you, Richard. So this is a session about this thing called the Team Transformation Canvas. It's about team building. It's about, well, you know, team building is, it's about all of us, but it's actually about each one of us individually. Uh, we're gonna take a look at that. I'm Richard Kasparowski. I'm an author, a teacher, a, a coach, a, a speaker. Um, I run a program called Certified Agile Team Building. We do training for how to have awesome teams, as well as Agile and Scrum skills, product owner skills, technical skills, and a training certification if you want to know how to do this yourself. Also, you have all my contact info here. We can, we can ask questions. We can have a conversation as we go here today. You can also get in touch with me later on. If you have any questions or you think of something later on, feel free to follow up with me. We're going to start with us individually. And we're going to do a couple of different kinds of interactions as we go. One kind of interaction will be using this electronic tool called Mentimeter. Join me here in Menti. One way to do that is to, hey, just noticing, I have a web browser that looks like this. Do you have a web browser that looks like this with a camera on it? My web browser has a camera on it. You could aim your web browser camera at that QR code and join me here in Menti, or you could type menti.com into your web browser and type 3890-3352. When you get there, those icons, click one of those icons. Let us know you're here with us. So many of you are in India. I'm in Boston in the United States. It's morning. I'm drinking morning tea. <laughs> I have a question for you. It's about your team. How awesome is your team? Now, yeah, okay, I'm from the United States, so my, my English tends to be informal. How awesome is your team? That's a really informal question. On a scale from not so awesome to wicked awesome. Also, I'm from Boston. So I use this word wicked. It means very, very, the most. How awesome is your team from not very awesome at all to the most awesome team that ever existed on earth? And how awesome do you want your team to be from not very awesome to the most awesome team that ever existed on earth? Yeah, so most, most teams, this is kind of a, the, the, usual, the usual answer. Most people's teams, most people think their teams are mediocre, somewhere in the middle. Good, not great, not terrible, good. And we all want our teams to be the best, the best they could possibly be. So if that's you, you're in the right place. Looks like somebody thinks their team today already is wicked awesome. Uh, we probably have some things we could learn from you. So I hope you stick around and can share some of your ideas with us. We'll start by sharing some of the, the background on the research on teams and team performance. The, the background, the, the research, the science on this, it's a really easy story to tell thanks to this article that was in the New York Times five years ago. So it turns out that people have been studying teams for at least 60 years in academic settings. And during that 60 years, the researchers have discovered hundreds of different characteristics that, according to their research, correlate to having a really great team. There are 200, maybe 250 of these different characteristics, different attributes that various researchers have identified as the one thing you need for a great team, the one thing you need for a high performance team. 250 one things, that's way too many. Uh, that's way more than any team could try to understand. That's way more than any team could, could use to try to make themselves the best team possible. 
I mean, when we do a retrospective, we try to focus on maybe one thing, maybe two things to make our team better. At Google, they hired a bunch of people to help them reproduce the research. They got about 200 teams to volunteer to participate in reproducing the research. And what they found was that the one thing that mattered more than anything else out of all those 250 different things that you, that you could measure about teams, the one thing that mattered more than, than anything else was psychological safety. The teams that measured high on psychological safety measured high on performance. Whether they were technical teams, software development teams, hardware development teams, or even sales teams, if they measured high on psychological safety, they outperformed other teams that were doing similar work. Psychological safety is this sense that we feel safe when we're together as a group. It's safe to take risks. It's safe to try out something new that you're not already good at. It's safe to take on a new role. It's safe to show up as who you really are. And when that happens, well, it turns out we, we do better work. We're more creative. We're more productive. We, we do higher quality work. And this cuts across all different industries. It cuts across all different countries and cultures. Here's an example from my dentist. So I told her what I was doing for work and, and she got really excited about it. And she pulled out the paper version of her, her dental office magazine. It was all about psychological safety for the workers at the dental office. Now I shared this story of Google with Steve Wolf. Steve Wolf is another one of these researchers. He did his research with his colleague, Vanessa Druskett. He knew all about psychological safety. He was doing his research at the same time as Amy Edmondson. Uh, Amy Edmondson is the person who discovered and popularized psychological safety. Steve and Vanessa discovered that there was something a little bit bigger than psychological safety. They called it team emotional intelligence. It's like individual emotional intelligence, but it's at a larger scale. So it, it means for example, that as a group, we understand how we're feeling. And as a group, we, we behave appropriately to make sure that we achieve our goals together, no matter how we're feeling. And we can perceive how others are feeling outside of our group, outside of our work, our work team. We can understand how the system works around our work team, the, the larger organization. And we can influence people outside of our work team to help us accomplish our goals for our team and for the whole organization. It includes the ability to build social capital. It, it, it includes measurable executive support. It includes psychological safety as one of the measurements. And it turns out that in, in this research, just like the research on psychological safety by itself, in the larger research on team emotional intelligence, when teams measure high on team emotional intelligence, they measure high on performance. Now this is science, so this is about where it ends. There's a correlation. If you measure this, you measure that, you notice that the measurements are similar. They don't tell you how to do it, which is kind of disappointing. It turns out you can't just tell people to do more psychological safety or do more emotional intelligence. Uh, we, we don't know how to do it. It's, it's not something that you can just tell us to do. These are outcomes from other behaviors. So there's this related research called The Core Protocols. This is the work of Jim McCarthy and Michelle McCarthy. They were doing observational research on teams in a lab. And they noticed that successful teams shared similar behaviors. They wrote down these behaviors as little scripts that we could all try to follow and learn from. And then they did some experimental research. They invited teams into their lab. They gave them an assignment and five days to get it done. And then they would introduce these behaviors that they had observed on high performing teams. Every time they did that, these teams in their experiments were successful. So they shared these behaviors uh, with the rest of us. You can find them on, in, in, in my book here. You can find them on a website called thecoreprotocols.org. And we're gonna look at a few of them today. What we notice is that 
when teams follow these behaviors, they build high emotional intelligence together. They build high psychological safety and they're very successful together. They are high performing teams. Uh, Steve, Steve Wolf, he's the team emotional intelligence researcher. He and I have done some, some work to associate the core protocols with, with the science and research on teams and team performance. And we noticed that for everything that gets measured in team emotional intelligence, there's a related behavior for it, a habit we can build, a way to do it that comes from the core protocols. So here's another way to look at this. If you want a high performing team, and you probably do, you definitely want psychological safety. The science is really solid. Psychological safety is a subset of this larger thing called team emotional intelligence. So you definitely want that. Now, if you want to know how to do that, the core protocols is one set of behaviors, one way to build higher team emotional intelligence, to build higher psychological safety, and to get a higher performing team. So then the next question is, okay, great. How, how do we learn these skills fast? I've been sharing these skills, the McCarthy's have been sharing these skills in a, in a five day class, right? Five days is a long time. Not, not many people, not many teams can take five days off from their work and not do any work and, and take a class to try to learn something. I've been doing it as a one day class or a half day class. That's even challenging for people. I notice that when I, when I talk to people individually or work with small teams, I always ask the same series of questions. And so I put together that series of questions on a canvas. And here, here's, a, here's a view of that canvas. It's a way for us to, to start exploring and learning these skills very, very quickly. We don't have to take a five-day class or a one-day class to start learning these skills. We're going to do this canvas together today and begin learning these skills. So here we go. This is the Team Transformation Canvas. You can find it at teamtransformationcanvas.com. You could find a Miro template there, and you could, use, you could do this electronically with us right now as we go. You could find a PDF there, you could print it, or you could just take a blank piece of paper. blank piece of paper fresh from the printer. And you can just draw one of these as you go. Make sure you have a, a pen, something to write with, a blank piece of paper, maybe a copy of the canvas, maybe the digital version of the canvas. It doesn't matter. At least have a blank piece of paper and a pen, and we'll do this canvas together as we go right now. Here's the full view of the canvas again, and we're going to start in the top left corner, the one about positive bias. Here's a close-up of that. This is about setting the context around you, setting the context around us individually and as a team and as a group here today. We're going to orient ourselves toward getting what we want. One of the ways we do that is by using positive language. We're going to make sure we use the word yes more than the word no. We're going to make sure we use the word and more than we use the word but. And whatever actions we take, whatever, however, whatever we do, whatever we say, whatever we do, while we're here together right now in, in Zoom and digital space, online, maybe even later on after you leave the conference and go back to the real world, we're going to bias everything we do to getting positive outcomes for ourselves individually and for the people around us. Now, if this is true for you, or if you can make this true right now, either check those boxes or write this down on your blank piece of paper. Write down these sentences or check off these boxes. This is kind of like the user agreement for the rest of this session. If you can do this, if you can say yes to this, if you can make this happen, then you are ready for the rest of this session. And then we'll move on to freedom and autonomy. This box in the top in the middle. Continuing with this setting up the context, setting up your environment for yourself and the people around you. Continuing with this user agreement. These sentences are about 
making sure that you're doing this because you want to do this. Nobody's making you do this. Your boss didn't say you must attend Richard's session and you must do whatever he says. That's, that would be the opposite of what we're looking for. You're here because you want to be here. You are choosing to do this. And well, it turns out that when you're with your team, the same thing that if you the high, on the highest performing teams, there are groups of people who choose to be together. Nobody commanded them to be together. While we're here, you can opt out of anything we're doing anytime for any reason. It's totally okay. We're going to do some activities. Uh, this right here is an activity. It's a solo one person activity. You don't have to do any of this. And you can leave anytime you want for any reason. Now, this is right here right now for this session. But on the best of the best teams, these two statements are true. If you can make these two statements true right now for this session, check those boxes or write down those sentences on your blank piece of paper. And if you can't, think about what you can do to make them true. That would be, that would be your homework. And then we're going to move on to this box on the left called the emotional state. We'll zoom in on that. Now, this first fill in the blank, we've got some fill in the blank activities here. I feel blank. How do you feel right now? You can fill in that blank, complete that sentence with any word or words that describe how you feel right now. And do that. Write it down on your piece of paper. Think a little bit and, and write it down. And then line two is a shorter version of this, a second version of it. It's multiple choice. How do you feel right now? And which one or more than one of those words? most closely matches how you feel. Do you feel glad or sad or mad, afraid, angry? You could say happy, that would be okay. Which one of those is closest to how you feel right now? Circle that word or write down that word on your blank piece of paper. I feel glad or I feel sad, I feel mad, I feel afraid. And then in box three, add on more information. What else? is going into how you feel right now. What other, what other information would help you understand how you're feeling right now? What else is going into that sensation in your body? All right, I'm gonna ask for help now we're going to do this bonus activity in groups of approximately three. Get together and share how you feel. Now, there, the parul is either going to make me the host or she's going to set up breakout rooms right now. Yes, yeah, so I will set up breakout rooms. We have about 59 people, so around. So we'll do uh, about 19 rooms. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, around 18 rooms, maybe right. some. Yeah. And we will assign automatically. Mm -hmm. So. And we'll be there for about two minutes, including whatever countdown timer there is to bring us back. So I think everyone should be back. Yeah. Okay. Welcome back. You just did a little bit of sharing how you feel with somebody for, and okay, maybe, maybe you went to a breakout room and you were alone. Maybe you got to reflect by yourself on how you feel. <laughs> if you made it to a breakout room and there was somebody else there and you got to share how you were feeling with somebody else, what was that like for you? How did it go? I want to hear from you. You could, you could share in chat how that went for you, or you could unmute and share with your voice. What was that like for you? For people for whom that worked, you could share how you were feeling with somebody, they could share how you were feeling, they were feeling with you. What was that like? We 
We got a friend in chat saying that was okay. No inhibitions. Another friend saying that felt good. It was weirdly comforting. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know if it's something that you do every day. In most work cultures, this is not normal. Oh, let's say most most teams are average, right? It's kind of the definition of, it's one of the definitions of average. On average teams, this is not what people do. On higher performing teams, this is something that people do. They might not do it exactly like this, but they... They share how they're feeling with each other. This is strongly supported by the research. It's good to know how the other person is doing, and it helps. It can position, help you position yourself accordingly. That's, that's exactly the definition of emotional intelligence. So just sharing a little bit about how you're feeling with the people around you, that helps you build up group emotional intelligence, and the research shows that this is one of the ingredients for having a great team. Let's... Oh, I want to actually, the whole group, how are we feeling as a whole group? Will you share in Menti which one of those was your answer? So there's a lot of glad, there's a lot of happy in our group. There's a little bit of sad, there's a little bit of mad, there's a little bit of afraid. looks like we're a group of humans. We as humans experience all of these emotions, all four of these emotions. And I, with these results, or this is either really good AI or we really are a group of humans. This is, this is very representative of a normal group of people. Uh, and these, this is normal. We, as a group, we all feel, even as individuals, we all feel all of these emotions and it's totally okay. Here's another way to gauge how we're doing. Just, just ask the large group, how, how are we doing? We're going to move on to this box in the middle. It's called personal alignment. Here's a little bit of a close-up. And we'll start at number one. I want blank. Fill in the blank, either on your canvas or on your blank piece of paper. Write, write a sentence that starts with, I want. And finish the sentence with the single most important thing in the world for you. Right. Maybe it's maybe it's near the end of the day where you are. Maybe maybe you want a cup of tea. Maybe you're getting hungry. Maybe you want something to eat. That, yeah, for sure. But think big. What what is the biggest, most important thing in the world for you? Big, big, big. Like I want world peace. Or I want everybody to live in great health. I want COVID to be solved. What is your biggest want? The most important thing in the world for you. Fill in the blank with whatever is your most important thing. And then go on to step two. If you answered step one, honestly, then you identified something that you want, the most important thing in the world to you. It's a want. That means it's something that you don't have, or it's something that you don't have all of. You don't have all of it yet. Why not? If it's the most important thing in the world to you, that's all you should be doing, right? Spending all your energy, all your time, all your resources pursuing that most important goal. So what's in your way? What's blocking you? Why, why can't you do that? What's preventing you from obtaining that most important thing in the world? Answer that question for yourself right now. And okay, in 60 to 90 minutes that we have here, that's, that's enough time to, to give you an introduction to this. You can definitely go back to this answer these questions more deeply later if you if you want to we're going to continue uh, number three here i want blank this time it's multiple choice your choices are to the right hand side 
You could say, I want self-awareness, or I want integrity, or courage, or passion, or peace, or presence, or self-care, or fun, or wisdom, or health. Okay, now, number one, you talked about what you want, that most important thing in the world. Number two, you identified what's in your way, what's blocking you. Number three, imagine that you had a superpower. And that superpower was one of these 10 powers. Which one of those 10 powers would be your future superpower? And if you had that as your superpower, like if you were a super courage person or super fun person or super peace, whatever your, your future superhero name would be, which one of those, if that was your superpower, would destroy everything that's in your way, eliminate everything that's blocking you, and help you achieve everything you want, those most important things that you want for yourself? Which one of those? 10 words. If you practiced it every day, if you became a ninth degree black belt in the art of presence or self-care or wisdom, which one of those would be the one for you that would get everything out of your way and get you everything you want? Fill in the blank with that word. Oh, and the default answer is self-awareness. If you're not sure what you want, try self-awareness. I know everybody, everybody was laughing at that joke. If we could unmute, oh, you would have heard 50 people laughing. Okay, we're going to move on. Oh, which one did you pick? What is your future superpower that you're going to start building? You're going to start practicing this every day. You get to define what it means for yourself. Your definition might be different from mine or from anybody else's here. Which one of those is your future superpower that will help you get everything that you care about the most? I think we've got all of them there. A lot of people are looking for peace. A lot of people are looking for self-care. Health, self-awareness, passion. We're going to be if we could keep this if we could keep this group together after this session, we would be the super peaceful, self-caring, passionate, healthy, self-aware, courageous, wise, fun people. If each one of us could hone that particular skill, we would be an amazing group together. We'd be an amazing team. We, we'd be able, we, we would be unstoppable as a team. We would get everything we want together. Number four here, my signal and response. When I blank, I want my friends and colleagues to blank. Fill in these blanks. Now, whatever your future superpower was, courage or passion or fun, whatever it was, imagine that you had a way to tell your friends, to tell your coworkers that you're practicing it right now. And you could just say, when I say I'm practicing integrity, right? or it might be some, some secret hand signal, or it might be some, some sound you make, woohoo, when I woohoo. I want my friends and colleagues, that might be, I'm working on fun. When I, woohoo, I want my friends and colleagues to do what? This could be as, as simple as when I say I'm working on integrity, I'm practicing integrity. I want my friends and colleagues to say, I support you. Or it could be when I, woohoo, I want my friends and colleagues to woohoo with me. What would it be for you? How would you tell your friends or colleagues or family members that you're you're working on your future superpower right now. And what would you want them to do to show you that they, they recognize that you're doing that and that they support you in that pursuit? Fill in the blanks with your answers. And then finally, number five at the bottom. You could say 
you want more health or passion or courage or peace. But it's not going to happen unless you practice every day, unless you build a new habit for yourself. And we build new habits by practicing at least once a day, usually many times a day. What will you do to build this new skill? How will you practice it? This could be as simple as you keep a journal, and in your journal, every day you write down an example of having practiced it. You know, it's Friday. I, pack, I practiced peace. Here's how. It's Saturday. I practiced peace. Here's how. It's Sunday. I practiced peace. Here's how. Or it could be something... Well, here's an example. My alignment was courage. My future superpower was courage at one point. And I defined courage. Courage meant the ability to face the things I was afraid of. Despite appearances, despite being here as a speaker in front of a, a large group of people, I'm, I'm actually shy. I'm timid. And so one of the things I'm afraid of is meeting new people. One of the things I was afraid of was meeting new people. My courage practice was to meet a new person every day. This was how I practiced it, box number five here. I filled in the blank. This is how I filled in the blank. How will I practice courage? I will meet a new person every day, and I will get to know them just enough to know their first name. I'll get to know their name. And then I would write it in my journal, Friday. I met Parul. Saturday, I met somebody named Priyanka. Sunday, I met somebody named Saraswathi. Monday, I met somebody named Anu. I would just write down the name of one person I met every day. It forced me to build this habit. It helped me build this habit of being able to meet new people, of, of building more courage. How could you build the habit for your future superpower? What will you do every day to build that skill? Fill in the blank with that. And then actually do it, starting today. Practice it today, practice it tomorrow, practice it the next day, practice it every day for two months at least and see what happens. Try it, do, do the experiment. We're gonna move on to the top right. It's called investigating myself. Here's a close up. Okay, your alignment, your future superpower. You picked one of those 10 words, peace, passion, health, what does that word mean to you? When you say peace, what does that mean for you? How would a friend be able to observe? We're going to make this empirical. How could a friend observe that you are practicing your future superpower? You're practicing your personal alignment. What else about your personal alignment? Anything else about it? Or what would you like to have happen? What's your, what's your goal? What's your outcome? What do you, what do you hope will happen? What's, what's the outcome going to be? Hey, I encourage you to take a screenshot of this right now, these, these four simple questions. Uh, maybe you know some, some fancy key combination on your computer. Um, maybe you have a screen capture device. My screen capture device looks like a web browser with a camera on it. Yeah, it's just a camera. Take a screenshot of this. Just remember these four questions. Pause for a moment and answer these questions for yourself. And then we'll try, well, since you took a screenshot and you remember what these questions are, as a bonus activity, in small breakout groups, talk to each other about your personal alignment. We'll do this really quickly. Uh, I'm gonna ask Peru for, for help again. Watch, Peru, will you help me? <laughs> of course, I will. So we, I'll just create rooms just a moment. Yeah, it'll be a different number of rooms because we have a different number of people now. 
Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe ten rooms. Yes. And we'll do it for one minute plus the one minute countdown. When you get to your breakout room, share, ask your partner what is their personal alignment, what is their future superpower. Ask them, what are you going to do to, or what, what does that word mean to you? How would I know you're practicing it? What would you like to have happen? Ask them anything you want to learn as much as you can about them as quickly as possible. We'll see you back here in two minutes. Welcome back. What did you notice? What happened? You're sharing the most important thing in the world with each other. What was that like for you? How did that go? Sometimes we call it was an awesome things. experience, Richard. It was an to awesome share. experience. To yes. Share. Yeah, great. Uh, and that was with a stranger, maybe. I don't, I don't know. Imagine if you did this yeah, with people. True. Imagine if you did this with people you care about. Ooh, how powerful that would be. Imagine if you did this with uh, your, your work team. If you could connect with each other so fast and so deeply, what a, what a cohesive team that would be. How awesome would that be? So Richard, uh, this is Rashmi here. Uh, one thing I observed that um, opening up with a stranger is a bit more easier than people whom you know. Yeah. So uh, you you can speak your mind uh, with people who you know. Uh, it is there's some kind of inhibition uh, because you know uh, that person personally. You know how that person would react. So at times it becomes uh, difficult to speak your mind in front of those people. Yeah, that that's true? because they, yeah, that's because they don't they judge you. You know that they yeah. judge you, and strangers don't judge. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Uh, yeah. So interesting. Now, what if we could start back at box number one? Positive bias, and and okay, maybe you could try this out with the people you work with or other people you know already, other people you care about. What if you just started off by agreeing that we're going to have a positive environment around us, no no judgment, no judgment. That that's probably the best. It's probably the place to start. That's such an interesting interesting observation. Thanks for sharing. Um. Oh, and we do sometimes I call this big talk, right? So I'm American. I'm like the champion of small talk. We can make small talk for days and never actually communicate everything, anything important to each other. All like, sure is nice weather. Looking out the window, nice weather today. Yeah, nice weather. Hey, how's the weather where you are? Yeah, it's, it's nice weather here. Oh, it's raining here. It's bad weather here. It's nice weather here. Oh, where are you from? I'm from the United States. I'm from Bangalore. I'm from Boston. It's okay. Small talk. Uh, big talk. What's the most important thing in the world to you? Big talk. <laughs> this is how we really connect really deeply. And um, maybe it's, it is easy with strangers because there's no, there's no patterns already. We don't feel judged by strangers. Uh, and, and we have set up this environment for this session where we're all in this positive mindset. Um, on the best of the best teams, we have this environment of positive mindset. Uh, so think about what you could do. Uh, maybe you could say the word yes more and, and say the word and more and, and avoid saying no and avoid saying but. Just beginning things to get into this positive mindset together. Maybe we agree that we're not going to judge each other. And that would help. It's that first box is the foundation for everything else, positive bias. We're going to go down to perfecting my alignment. Now, this is a way you could use these three questions to ask for feedback on anything, to give feedback on anything. Right now, it's going to be to give yourself feedback on your personal alignment, that future superpower. Give your future superpower, that whole plan you made, even how to, how to practice it, give it a score from 1 to 10, where 10 would mean 
it couldn't be any better. You can't think of any way to make it better. Nine would be, I could make it 10% better. Eight would be like, I could make it 20% better. Right? Five would be like, I could make it twice as good. Number two is, well, what is good about it? What did you come up with that is that, that you think is going to work well? Did you pick the right word? Did you think of a good way to practice it? Do you understand what it means for you? Will it really eliminate everything that's blocking you? What are the positive attributes? And number three is, what else would you do to improve it? Maybe change the word. Maybe get a better definition of it. Maybe actually come up with a signal and a response. Maybe share it with other people you care about, who you see every day. What else would it be to make it perfectly right for you? And write down your answers. All, all of this think and write. This is this is to help reinforce the learning. Uh, when you when you bring in some physical motion, even just writing with a pen or pencil, it, it helps us remember more. Okay, and then finally, help. We call this big talk, the, the most important thing in the world for you. Your future superpower, it's going to unblock everything in your life and get you all the most important things. You're going to try to build a new habit. This is going to be really hard. You are going to need help. How will you ask for help? What help do you think you're going to need? Who do you think will be able to help you? Who will you ask for help? Exactly what help will you ask for? write down at least one, maybe more than one, examples of concrete requests for help. Who will you ask and what will you ask for to help you build this superpower? Okay, that, that is the entire canvas. It's an introduction to the canvas. You can go back to it later and, and, and do it at your own pace, do it more deeply. How about next steps? First, I want to know what, what, what's your key takeaway? What's the most important thing you learned here in this hour or the most interesting thing you heard? If your answer is something else, thank you. I would love to hear what your something else is. You could write it in chat or you could message me later. This is one of the ways I learn. So maybe this canvas could help each of us be a better one of each of us. Or maybe you could do this with your team and it would help the team. Or maybe there's something else. Or maybe there's all these canvases in the world. Canvases are so much fun. Oh, also, by the way, there is science on high-performance teams, and we could use that science to help our team be better. Uh, another view of that, 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 that trail of how the science works, if you want a high-performance team, you definitely want psychological safety. Psych safety is a subset of team emotional intelligence. These are concepts. These are feelings. These are sensations. You have to be able to build some new habits to have some plan for doing it. Core protocols are an example of one way to, to gain these, to, to gain more team emotional intelligence and psych safety and to get more performance together for your work team or get more of what you want in any group of people you care about. Now, of course, you can have high performance teams. This is where we started way back at the beginning. We, most of us said our team is average and we want our team to be better than average. Well, okay, we just did this canvas as a solo activity. You did it yourself. And it's great for self-awareness and, well, we even shared a little bit with others. 
you could do this together with your whole team. You could, you could spend 60 minutes together with your teammates. This could be an activity you do together. You know, starting at that top left box, positive advice, setting up that environment for positivity, that we're not going to judge each other, that it's going to be safe here, that, that we have freedom. We're, we're, we're together because we want to be, that we share how we're feeling with each other, that we share the most important personal goals with each other, that we talk to each other about it, we, we have a big talk kind of conversation, that we ask each other for help, that we support each other in each one of ours, in, in the individual pursuit of each one of us toward the best, the most important things that we want. When we do that, we will be a great team, a wicked awesome team. So try this yourself, try this with other people you care about. It will improve the group that you're with. Right? So all together, you could find this at teamtransformationcanvas.com, or you could just get a blank piece of paper and do it together that way, like we just did. If you want help, ask me for help anytime. If you want to know more about these things called the Core Protocols, visit that website, thecoreprotocols.org. Uh, other ways to get help, uh, run a lot of classes. We do do a lot of talks like this. We have a self-paced course coming soon. We're, we're, we're developing it right now. Um, we're doing a session on technical agility next week at the Excellence in Agile Conference, which will be in your time zone if you're in India. It's, it's based in Singapore. Uh, every Wednesday, I do a free office hour. You're invited to join me every Wednesday. The next one will be next week. Uh, you can come and ask a question or just we can we can have a short conversation or maybe we could just be friends. It would be fun. Every Thursday, the first Thursday of every month, we run a we run an event called the Agile Dojo where we learn and practice things to help us be better agile teams and better facilitators of agile teams. And we're doing a class on this uh, in February, a live online class. Uh, in association with my friends at Agile for Humanity. So you're, you're invited to join us at any of these events. I have a request for help. Will you help me? Right? None of us can, can do anything amazing solo. We, we definitely need help. Uh, I want your help. Will you help me? This is the help I'm asking for. Will you give me feedback on what we just did? And after this feedback, we'll have time for questions and answers and conversation. Uh, the feedback is uh, just like you saw in the canvas. Give this session a score from 1 to 10 based on how much better you think you, you could make it. That's the first question. And the second question is, what was good about it? Help me understand what was good about this so I could do more of it. The third question is, what else would it take to, to, to be perfect? What else? What, what could I change? What, what would make this perfect? Will you give me that help? I'll pause for a moment so you can. And for anybody who hasn't finished yet, you can continue doing it. We're at the end of what I was going to share. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. Thanks for trying out these solo activities. Thanks for participating in these small group activities. You have all my contact info here. You can ask me a question. You can ask me for help anytime you want. Uh, and we have time for questions and answers right now. Um, if you have a question or a comment, you could unmute and you could ask with your voice or you could ask in chat. And people have been asking some questions in chat. I'm going <clears> to <throat> I'm going to scroll through and, and try to answer some of these. Hey, Richard, Harry here. So you had mentioned one of the things that is uh, freedom and autonomy. And uh, you, you mentioned like I can opt out of the any activity or I can exit from any situation. Yeah. What really happens if this is something like where we have customer commitments, the teams with having a lot of pressure and all those things. So how, how, how do it, it will be taken, how it will be taken, if at all, this is provided sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a great question, Harry. Um, okay, so there, there, there's a lot going on with, with the best of the best teams. Uh, 
some of the things we touched on here, like we can opt out, we can opt in. Everything we're doing is because we choose to, right? Um, on the best of the best teams, when we have a commitment to deliver something to a customer, we made that commitment together. We opted in to that commitment. We chose that commitment for ourselves versus you might experience this on other teams. Somebody else made the commitment and told us we had to do it. Somebody else signed a contract or something, made a promise to a customer, and now they're making us do it. On the best of the best teams, we make that commitment for ourselves, right? On, on average teams, maybe somebody else makes that commitment and, and we're stuck with it. If you can find a way to go more toward we make that commitment together, uh, your team will be better. The peop because the people on the team, having made that commitment, they're going to they're gonna honor it. Okay, that, that's, that's it. Good answer. Thanks, thanks, Richard. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions or comments? So, Richard, I'm all here. Uh, so, in, when we were talking about the 10 superpowers, uh, you said self-awareness is one of the defaults. So, what was yeah. the thought process behind that? Does it mean that self-awareness can lead to all the nine of them gradually? Or does it mean the person needs more help so that they can identify at least one of the superpowers? What is the thought process? Well, uh, okay, so self-awareness. Uh, self-awareness means you're aware of everything about yourself. Uh, if, you, if you don't know what you want, if you're not sure what you want, that kind of means you're lacking in self-awareness, right? If you're not sure what you want, if you don't know everything about yourself, then you don't have enough self-awareness. So self-awareness would be something that you might pursue. Uh, that's okay, that's the easy thinking on that. And okay, yeah. so that's basically the first step, right? So self-awareness is the first step, which basically yeah. leads to one of the other nine. Sure. Yeah, and and like you're 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 hinting at here, it could lead to the other nine. You know, you can't have you can't know that you want courage or peace unless you have the self-awareness. Uh, you can't have self-awareness without the courage to, I don't know, give yourself enough time and be honest about it or to put yourself in a peaceful environment. Uh, having done that would be an indication of wisdom, right? It turns out that like, like you're, like you're, you have a really good clue about this. They are all the same thing. You can't have any one of them without having all the others. However, to be able to build these skills, we can really only focus on one thing at a time, on, on building one new skill at a time. So pick the one that is your biggest gap right now and work on that one. Okay, great. Sure, Richard. Thanks. It was a great session. Oh, thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for joining me today. It's really wonderful uh, having you all here. Uh, thanks for thanks for all the participation. I hope you got something valuable from this. I hope you got something from this that you could take with you, um, maybe to work on Monday, or maybe just to the people you care about the most, whoever those people are. And uh, and I wish you well. Thanks. Thank you, Richard. It was uh, there's something that I'm definitely going to take to my teams, and I'm sure a lot of people in the audience are also saying that that they are also going to take it to their teams. So thank you for this session and a lot of information we have got a lot of takeaways um, your website and how we can be connected with you so thank you so much for that